What's going on my TNT kids and my Sparks? All right, we're here tonight. It's April the 1st and there's no April Fools. This is actually happening, all right? We're going to be in where? Section 4.4 and we're talking about discovery of kindness and goodness. This is definitely no April Fools thing. We're talking about kindness and goodness. So let's jump on in here, guys. We're going to start out everything that we're talking about tonight is right here, okay? We discover kindness and goodness when we show our love for God and others by doing good works for them, okay? By doing good works for them. Now, when I'm saying this, let me, let me go ahead and start on something that a lot of people like to get confused on. If we do good works, do we get into heaven? No! Good works will not get us into heaven, okay? There's only one way we enter into heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, God's Son, the Savior of the world that was sent here as a perfect blood sacrifice for the remission of my sins, your sins, your mama's sins, everybody's sins. That's the only way. When we accept that we're a sinner, we believe in Jesus Christ, and we confess our sins to him and ask him to come into our heart, that is the way we get into heaven. It is not through good works in any way, okay? But what we're talking about tonight is we discover what? Kindness and goodness when we show our love for God in others by doing good works for them, okay? So let's jump on into this. Now then, we discover kindness and goodness when we discover God's what? Grace. That's right, His grace. Now again, this is a reoccurring theme if you have not figured this out, okay? Grace. What is grace? Grace is getting something good we don't deserve. Boys and girls, I guarantee you this. We don't deserve the goodness that God gives us every day. We don't deserve the kindness that God gives us every day. We don't deserve the salvation that we get, but yet God loved us so much and he bestowed the grace on us that is unbelievable that he allowed his son to take the punishment for my mistakes, for my sins. So that is one thing. First of all, we discover kindness and goodness when we discover God's grace. Now, what all goes with that? Check this out. God's amazing grace and love for us causes us to love God with our heart, our soul, mind, and strength. Okay? And we are also able to love others as ourselves. Practicing kindness and goodness only happens when we have this kind of love. <coughs> Boys and girls, you're not going to get that kind of love any other way except through God's grace. And not only God's grace, but practicing it, going out, demonstrating it, showing it, living it. Okay, that's the only way this is going to go down with you is that you have to take a role in reading it and then doing it. Mm, takes a little bit of responsibility on your part. It's nothing free. Okay, so what do we have to go along with that? Let's check this out. Luke chapter 10 verse 27 says, He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your what? Your heart with your soul, and with all your strength, and with your, your mind, okay? And your neighbor as who? Yourself. Boys and girls, sometimes one of the hardest things we can ever do is love another person as much as we love ourselves. Because whether we like to admit or not, we all love ourselves a pretty good bit. We all think that we are it in some things, and when we look at other people, we go, oh, you're not as good as I am. <laughs> wrong. God made them just like he made you. I guarantee you. You both put your socks on. You both put your underwear on. You both put your pants on the same way. Maybe one leg different than the other. Maybe one before the other. Please put the underwear on before the pants. Okay? Cool. <coughs> but the point is he made us all the same. And what we have to do is we show that kindness and we show that love to our neighbor as we would to ourselves. Okay? Everybody catching me on that? Cool. Let's look at the next one up here. Next one. We discover kindness and goodness when we study what? Godly examples. 
Oh my boys and girls, there are examples out there that you can follow. There are people that you can follow. There are things you can watch and listen to the whole nine yards. There's all kind of people out there that you may go, ooh, I want to be like him, or ooh, I want to be like her. Okay? You can do all that, but the point is this. The point is this. There are godly examples in the book of the Bible. Okay? You, again, responsibility, you can go check those out. What are some of them that we got in here? You see, God's Word gives us examples of people who showed kindness and goodness to others. Here's three examples that I want you to go check out. Jonathan in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. What went on here? Huh? Huh? I want you to tell me. I got another one. The Good Samaritan, Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 25. Now, excuse me, that should be 30 through 35. Go check those out, okay? And another one right here. The Four Friends and the Lame Man comes from Mark chapter 2, verses 2 through 12. What went on in these? What went on? There are examples that took place in these sections, and I want you to shoot me a quick video back, tell me what happened. Those that do, I'll give you double bucks for tonight. For tonight. You do that, I'll give you double bucks. I'll get in trouble with Miss Amy and Miss Nicole, I guarantee you, but I'm going to sneak this one on in there. If you're watching tonight, and you can give me a video tomorrow that explains how those three people were being, or those three examples were being good examples of godliness, I'll double your bucks for tonight. Deal? Deal. Fist bump? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you check that out. Put it on the Facebook page with a short video explaining that. The next one. We discover kindness and goodness when we do good works. Okay? Now, I, I think I clarified this at the beginning. Good works will not get you into heaven. Good works will not get you anywhere close to heaven. Okay? You can give everything you got trying to be good works to do the greatest there is. It still won't get you to heaven. There's only one way to get in heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. But let's look at this just for a second, okay? We are God's workmanship. Boys and girls, we are God's workmanship. He saved us and created us to do good works that bring who? Him glory. Now, you got to understand this. We are His workmanship. You know, people say, Mr. Steve, you're an ugly looking rascal. Now, I'm a piece of art, man. God made me this way. Yeah, God made me this way. This is the way I am his workmanship. I am his beauty that he has created. Believe it or not, this is beauty in the eyes of God. I am his workmanship. And not only that, I was created for good works that he, that would bring him glory. Now let's look at something. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared when? God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Ahead of time. Okay? Think about this. Think about this. This, this proves that God is omnipotent. He's all over the place. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's, he's everything. Okay? He exists outside of time. You know how? Because God created me here, but he also prepared something for me over here. The only way he can do that is to be able to stand outside of the timeline and go, okay, I'm going to start this over here. Hey, later on, Steve's going to be born here, and he's going to do this and this and this. I'm going to go ahead and prepare this so when he comes through life and he gets to that point, oh, yeah, it's going to happen, and it's going to make everybody go, wow, he serves an awesome God. Boys and girls, did you hear that? You see, we are made in his image to do things to glorify him. God prepared those things ahead of time for me. He's prepared them for you. But you won't know it unless you're doing the good works that he's asking you to do. When you find that kindness and goodness in doing good works for God. He has prepared so many good things for you. So many good things for him. He wants to see you bring those things to fruition. Not only that, check this out. God is at work in us and through us to do these good works. You see, God's just not going to throw you out there and say, good luck. <laughs> no, 
You can ask for his help and he will be with you, walk with you, arm in arm and carry you all the way through it and help you through it and show you through it. He wants to be there with you. He wants you to be right there. He wants to be able to talk back and forth with you and have a relationship and communication. But it takes you. It takes you. And how do we know this? Because Philippians 2.13, that's how we know. For it is God. For it is God who is working in both you and will. Excuse me. Okay, let me go through it again. There. For it is God who is working in both to will and to work according to his good purpose. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Boys and girls, God is working in you for his purpose. He is there with you. You are not in this thing alone. It's, it's hard to understand sometimes that there's a omnipotent, awesome, amazing God out there that cares enough about me to set up something good for me that in the long run brings honor to him. Because I think a lot of times, how can, how can this awesome God use this? How can he use this to do anything to bring honor and glory to him? But that's my God. That's my king. That's who he is. He uses the most incredible nothingnesses to do great things. One of, one of my favorite things is that God reached into nothing, grabbed a hold of something, and created everything. That's the God I serve. That's the God that you can serve. The God that can do all these things. And we will find kindness and we will find goodness when we do the good works that he's prepared ahead of time for us to do, boys and girls. Okay, let's move on. We discover kindness and goodness when we seek to glorify God and obey His commands. Oh my, we're obeying whose commands? God's commands. Okay, but that only happens when we find that kindness and the goodness when we seek to glorify God and obey His commands. Now, we have options. We have options. We can obey God or we cannot obey God. If we obey God, we're going to discover that kindness and goodness. If we don't obey God, we're going to have a pretty rough time, you guys. There may be some happiness out there that occurs, and there may be a little, woo, but it's not going to be like it is over here with God. Okay? Check this out. As we study God's word and trust his love, and we what? Trust his love. Then we will begin to see opportunities in our lives to show kindness and goodness. We'll see opportunities to show kindness and goodness. You see, when we're, we, we're discovering all this stuff, we're getting it, we're getting the knowledge in us, God wants us to take that knowledge and go forward with it. He doesn't want us to just hang back and go, well, I got God's goodness and kindness in my pocket here. I'm just going to hold on to it and not do anything. <laughs> no, that is not what God wants you to do. He's going to present you with opportunities, just as it says right there that we will begin to see opportunities in our life to show kindness and goodness. Look, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially, especially those who belong to the household of faith. Boys and girls, when we have opportunity, let us be doing goodness. Let us be obeying his commands and be doing things for those who belong in the household of faith, which is who? The Christians and those that we can go out and make other people see the goodness that he's doing for us and then they can come along with us. It's for everybody. We should be doing kindness and goodness to everybody. It's just not the Christians. It's just not the saved. It should be everybody. Okay, so are you understanding here? 
We follow God. We obey God. We obey his commands. We find goodness. We find kindness when we study his word. Boys and girls, kindness and goodness shouldn't be something that God has to tell us to do, but it is. And we can find that kindness and goodness when we obey God. All right. Memory verse for tonight. It's coming from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Putting it back in the New King James Version because that's what we use for uh, our memorization. And it says this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10 for we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Boys and girls, I want you to get this verse. I want you to be able to memorize it, video it, send it to me on MV412 Ministries on the Facebook page. Send me that video. Put it in there. Get your bucks. And remember, <clears throat> put the other video in there. I'll double up your bucks. That's right. So let's wrap up what we talked about tonight, okay? Let's look at this. We're going to do a quick sum up, get sure, make sure we got everybody to go, okay? We are God's masterpiece, and He created us to do good works. Boys and girls, we're like a Van Gogh, okay? We're right, like a Rembrandt. We, we are Rembrandt. We are awesome. We're masterpieces. Created by God. Don't let anybody tell you you're not special. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not wonderfully made. Don't let anybody look down on you and say, you're just trash. No, you're a masterpiece created by God to do good works. Secondly, when we allow God to work in us and through us, we will discover how to show kindness and goodness to others. Now, again, when we allow God to work in us and through us. Boys and girls, it shouldn't come down to the point where we have to say, God, I'm allowing you. But you know what? That's the God we serve. He doesn't force it. He doesn't demand it. He doesn't shove it down our throats. He wants to. But it's our decision. It's that free will. Are we going to allow God to work with us and through us to show kindness and goodness? It's pretty deep stuff there, guys. Now, parents, I hope you're sitting there. I hope you're watching with me, okay? I hope you're right here and you're going along with this because I got something for you too, parents. That's right. Homework for the parents. I'm giving homework all the way around tonight. I'm just going crazy. All right, so parents, I want you to sit down with your kids and at this point you're gonna go, freeze frame. And you're gonna go and look over these questions right here. I want you to sit down with your kids and ask these questions. I want you to have a conversation, a dialogue with your kids and go over some of these things and ask them what's going on. Find out what does it mean to be kind and good? Why is it sometimes hard to be kind and good? How can God's word help someone remember to be kind and good to who? Others. And to whom could you show kindness and goodness to this week? Those are the kind of things I want to know from you parents and the kids. I want y'all to work together on this. Go over this kind of stuff. You're stuck at home with each other. Why don't you go ahead and study a little bit of God's word and talk it out. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. It has been a joy to do this again tonight. Uh, I can't wait until we're able to get back together. It is absolutely, I'm, I'm going crazy, but we're, we're working this out. I'm getting this out to you guys, and I pray that you're getting something out of it, and it's all working out for whose glory? God's glory. That's what we're all about. We're trying to uplift him, bring him honor, Praise and glory. Boys and girls, I love y'all. I can't wait to see you again. And until next time, hey.
Mr. Steve knows this. He knows he loves you. He cares for you. And so does God. Love y'all. Bye-bye.